Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool video game video for you today. Usually we do arcade games and pinball machines, but we also have a video game store, so we get in interesting video game stuff from time to time, and when we do, we film a little video. So today's video is this cool Venture Electronics Video Sports VS7 system that we got in. There's this gentleman here, local, who sets up at the flea market, and he's been there for forever. I mean, I know that he's been there for 20 years, that I know of. And he's got tons of stuff, and uh, he's just got, um, it's one of the places where you can leave your stuff in, a, in like a storage bin that you roll the, the, um, the uh, door down on. And he's had stuff packed in there for 20 years that I know of, and so, since they built the place, basically. He's been there the whole time and uh he's been cleaning up and so some of his stuff he's been digging out and bringing us some of the video game stuff so he brought us this system in a box with a bunch of other stuff and it's pretty cool this is not a super valuable system or anything but it's really neat so we thought we'd film a video and if you didn't know all of our videos that we do on arcade games and video uh, pinball machines and stuff like that we mainly just film them just to uh, kind of document them a little bit so that uh, people can remember it down the road. Because this thing may end up in the trash one of these days. Or it may break and somebody gets rid of it or whatever. It's not super valuable. But this video will live on, right? So today we document it. This is a 1977 VS7. VS, of course, standing for Video Sports. So back whenever Pong came out. Uh, Pong was basically just a, a, a video version of tennis. So they made tons of these little consoles that you plugged up to your TV that played the same freaking game. Like, there were hundreds of them, really hundreds of them. Um, and it, it, it's hard to even understand why it went down like that, but if you think about it, you really had to get your mind in a completely different place. You know, a sport that you can play is tennis, you know. And so they thought that a computer version of tennis was what video games were, you know. So, like, if a hundred different companies made the same exact game, Pong, and called it different things, they thought it was just a hundred different companies making uh, tennis rackets, you know. I mean, if, if, if tennis equipment was really, really popular, then maybe a hundred different companies would make stuff for tennis. So it was the same thing. So there wasn't really all that much uh, innovation for a little while. So for a little while, they didn't really come up with much different. They just, every game was tennis, you know? Um, and so this company put out one called, I think it was the VS3, I think was their first one. And it had uh, maybe two games or something on it, and then the VS5, and then the, this was the VS7. So I think this was their last Pong system. Um, and they called it, uh, well, I don't know why they called it the VS7, but they they actually have several games that you can select. Now, there's supposed to be a little knob on there, but you've got a, a power switch, an auto and manual serve selecting switch, and then you can turn it on amateur or pro for each player. So this is a four-player machine, but two players can play as well. You can, or one player can play. So it can be one player, two player, or four player, depending on which game you play. So this particular machine has a, an attachment missing. On the side here, and it may be in the guy's stuff. I need to ask him about it. On the side here, there was a little gun that plugs in because two of the games are uh, target practice games. So I'm going to show you the different games and just show you how the thing was and what 1977 was like. Now... We've got it hooked up to this newer TV, which was a feat unto itself, right? Um, and the very top game is your classic Pong game. So if you're all the way up, it has one tennis racket. So what that means is it's actually two players, which I know sounds crazy, but on each side there is only one tennis racket. So it's this left knob, and then you got the right one. Now all of these remove, so you can pop this out, and it's got a cable. So uh, if you had four people playing, you could pull them all out, sit on the couch, and play it. All right? And they've all got this serve button too. So if you've got it on manual serve, I think if I hit this, it might serve the ball. 
Yeah. Oh, and I got me. Right? So, uh, since we're on manual, it probably won't serve it automatically. Let's put it on auto and see if it serves it automatically. We'll hit that to start it. Okay, let's see if I don't hit anything, if it automatically serves the next one. Yeah, okay. So, all right. So that's the first game. So if you slide it down, and this this is a little loose, but you can feel there are places for it. So I'm now on the put it back on manual. I'm now on the second game. So the second game is doubles, basically. So it's tennis doubles. So you, the first player is here, second player is here, third player is here. You can see that the pots jump just a little bit, but that's pretty good for most of these old ones. So this is the same exact game, but it's a four-player version. Or if you're really good, you might be able to play with two hands. All right, and so then the third one is hockey. All right. So hockey, you know you're on both sides of the court. So that's one control. And then this control does the other two. So you've got basically a goalie and I think this is a call to forward. Is that right? And the same on this side. Right? So the fourth one is soccer. So on soccer it's four players and your your teams are on both sides of the field. I mean on, or on the same side of the field. Oh no, actually they are on different sides of the field but you're just playing with four players. So they're considering that hockey. I mean that's soccer. Right? And so the next one down is badminton. Is that right? Am I, no, it's... Is that squash? What is that considered? Racquetball? So basically, you hit it against the wall. Oh, and it got by me. It got by me, folks. Let's try it with this one. So this could actually, uh, you know, this is just a slightly different version of the game. Oh, did it go through because I, oh, you know what? Man, this might be more intelligent than I thought. So basically, look, you can, you, so I can hit it once. Am I doing that right? The other guy's supposed to hit it, right? Let's see if I'm doing this right. All right, so he served it, right? And I hit it. Now he's got to hit it. Am I doing that right? I think I am. So let's see who serves it this time. So I served it, which means I can't hit it. Yeah, okay. So see, it's a little more intelligent than I thought. So I served it, so he has to hit it. And I keep missing with him. Let's try it one more time. I served it. Hmm. The game is smarter. I served it. The game is smarter than I am. There we go. So I hit it. Now he has to hit it. And you have to go back and forth. All right, so you get the point. All right, and so then if you go down one more, now it's just uh, the one-player version. So there's a little picture of a robot-looking guy throwing the ball. So now it's just one player. So if there's only one of you around, like me, right now, and look, if you get stuck like this, I think you can put some English on it. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I beat myself. And I think the score is messed up because I never turned the game back off. All right, so if you move down to the next one, it's a little target game, right? So it's saying target practice, right? So a target pops up, bam! You shoot it with the light gun, bam, bam! All right, so that's one variation. Now look at this bottom one. This bottom one, 
Looks really similar, but it's not a target when it's a skeet shoot. So it moves. <laughs> now, if y'all weren't around in 1977, don't feel bad I wasn't either, but I was around in the early 80s and this would have been kind of fun even then. So, very cool. Now, one thing I wanted to show you that's really interesting to just show you kind of put it back on Pong. Just show you how the how primitive this stuff was back then. Okay? The sounds that you're hearing are coming out of this speaker right here. So we'll get it to do something. Okay. The little beeps and boops. Let's see if I can hit one so you can hear it. Okay. Now if you if you turn up the volume on the speaker, I mean on the TV. So the TV is just getting noise. And the sounds do not come from the TV. So on the on the very earliest ones from the 70s, they made their own sounds. Like it can't send a signal. It couldn't send sounds to the TV yet. They were still bragging about that they had an on-screen score. So, it's fairly primitive stuff. But still, very cool. We still get people in our store all the time asking for Pong. So they'll they'll have a, uh, they'll want to buy an Atari and they'll want to buy Pong for the Atari. And they'll say, oh yeah, wherever I was, uh, when I was uh, uh, a kid, we had Pong for the Atari. But I'm I'm not positive, but I don't even think there was a Pong game for the Atari. It was it was combat. So if you play combat, let me look over here. We've got our system things up here, our boxes. See, it came with combat. Tank and Tank Pong were a couple of the games. So the Pong game was like the combat game. There, I think there may have been a. I don't know. There may have been like a Super Pong or something. But I believe most people are just remembering playing combat or playing one of these systems with the knobs on it. So, we just figured we'd film a little video for you and show you this one because it's kind of neat. I'll show you the bottom of it. Let's turn it off so we don't mess anything up. It all still seems to work pretty good, which is awesome from 1977, right? Venture Electronics International Limited, model number VS7, FCC type approval number TV-394, valid only when operated pursuant to FCC rules, part 15. And it takes C batteries, but we've got it plugged up with its original, uh, original power supply it's still got, which is pretty cool. And these kind of, they fit in there, and then if you push them a little bit, it like holds them kind of snug. If you get it in between games too, it'll do that, like if you don't get that right where it's supposed to be. You'll get sounds and you'll get weird stuff on the screen. It's because you got it in between games. Check that out though. What do you think? Pretty neat, huh? Definitely something to keep around to show people what video games used to be like. This is before the Atari. Sweet. So, leave your comments below. Did you ever have one of these? Or which one did you have? Was it better than this one? This one seems pretty cool. I mean, eight different games. I wish I had the gun so we could try the target shooting, but I kind of have an idea how that would have went. <laughs> we don't have the gun, but oh well. There may be some way to... There may be another one that you can get that will fit that. But Leave your comments below. Tell us what you think about it. Uh, and give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you before we put it down in our case for sale here. And uh, 
uh, make sure and subscribe to us. I was looking at our um, analytics today, and only 10% of our viewers are subscribed to us. Can you believe that? So 90% of the people that watch the videos don't subscribe to us, and they're missing out on so much great stuff. But uh, make sure and subscribe to us if you haven't already. If you have, we thank you. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it, and we will see you on the next video.